Hi there. In this screencast, I'm going to talk to you a bit about black body radiation and surface heat capacity. So, well, let's consider you, for example. You are at room temperature, but you are emitting energy. You're emitting electromagnetic radiation. and It happens to be in the thermal or infrared region, but you are emitting it. Even if you're very cold, you're still emitting that radiation. You also can be absorbing some. Here, yeah, this picture of this uh, lava flow, uh, it is also an object. It's emitting radiation, uh, thermal radiation, and it's also emitting some visible. Some of the, uh, the energies are in the visible portion of the spectrum. The Earth is an example of a back black body. It absorbs uh, radiation and it emits it, emits energies. Uh, and the Sun is also. Now, the Sun not only emits thermal energy, but it also emits uh, energies in the visible spectrum and some even beyond into the ultraviolet. So the formal definition of a black body is an object that is a perfect emitter and absorber of radiation. So if you have, for example, light falling on an object here, it could be absorbed or will be absorbed and re-emitted um, in all directions and it will be probably a different spectrum of energies that gets emitted. Um, the term black body does not refer to a, a color. That is, the object does not have to be a um, literally black in, in color. It just stands for that. It's uh, if, if objects appear black, that means they absorb all um, visible radiation, for example. So I think the term comes from that. Uh, the Sun and Earth uh, can be described as a black body. There's a great simulation from FET, which I have up and running. I'll pop that up here. So let's look at this here. What this shows us is uh, the intensity of energy that's uh, radiated, and this is the wavelength uh, of energies. So we have a spectrum of energies that are radiated, and this is at 300 Kelvin, so room temperature. So if you're at uh, room temperature, or an object is at room temperature, it will be emitting these the spectrum of, of energies. It looks like the peak is about, so that's 24, around 10 um, micrometers, so which is definitely in the far infrared. So it's giving off some, some heat. And now this would be true whether it be a piece of wood or a rock or a piece of iron. Let's see what happens when we increase the temperature. We expect to have an in increase of energy radiation. So let's uh, go up to, um, say, the an oven's temperature. It would be about 600. That's where we would bake a, a pie or something like that. Let's um, bring this down so we can see it. So a couple things to notice here. So the, the shape is generally the same. Um, but this peak is now, instead of, this is 24 here, this was 10. This is where the peak was before. The peak is now over here around 5. So the, we doubled our temperature, but we um, halved the peak wavelength here. So we're at now peak energy is around 5 micrometers. Okay, so as the temperature increases, we get more area under here, but also this peak tends to shift toward the uh, shorter wavelengths, or that would be higher frequencies. You can see this over here. This band is the visible portion of the spectrum, these rainbow colors. This particular object at 600 uh, Kelvin is hot, but it's not yet emitting any visible light, really. So this tail over here is not yet into the visible light. So let's try and increase this some more. Um, maybe go up to a, a thousand degrees uh, or a thousand Kelvin. And we have to cut back here. We can see that we here we go. Again, this so this is 12. This is about this is 10. This is about five. Four. The peak here, the peak wavelength is around three. Micrometer. So again, the peak is shifting toward these uh, shorter wavelengths, getting toward the visible light. And we're just barely getting a little bit of energy in the red spectrum over here at uh, 1,000 Kelvin. So let's go up to, this is a light bulb, I think is what that is. Um, I think I remember buying a, one of those compact fluorescent bulbs, and it said it's you know warm white, which and then it said like 3,000 degrees, which is probably the uh, color of light similar to that of a, a incandescent bulb, which we're all used to. So let's spread this out a little bit. And then, okay, this makes sense. So we have uh, at 3,000 Kelvin, we have a peak here of um, one 
micrometer or so, the, the energies there. But you can see there's a significant number of um, uh, energies radiated in the visible spectrum as well. So we've got um, most of it here in the, the thermal, uh, infrared, and some of it in red, yellow, green, blue, even a bit beyond and a little bit even in the ultraviolet. So this object would tend to appear, I think this, what this is trying to say, like if a, a star had this temperature of 3000 Kelvin, it would appear this color, it's kind of a, kind of a reddish orange-ish sort of color. And if we keep on going up, let's go up, um, see I know our sun is probably around maybe 50, 5000 something, 570 something, 5700 somewhere in there. Uh, so let's bring this back down and spread this out a little more and we can see, so this is about the temperature of our sun and it appears white because it has a um, a full spectrum, visible spectrum of, of colors. So this is why we see rainbows from our sun. Uh, now the sun also puts out a lot of infrared, a lot of heat. It also puts out ultraviolet, which we have to protect ourselves from using you know, sunscreens and such. Okay, and again, you can see this peak is now over here, which is uh, sub-micron. So it's about six, five uh, tenths, maybe half a uh, micron, 500 nanometers. Yeah, which should be around the greenish, bluish, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. Okay, so just the, uh, the what, to, what to know that, okay, yes, this peak uh, shifts to the shorter wavelengths or higher frequencies as the temperature uh, increases. Okay, the area under that graph goes as temperature to the fourth power, and this was uh, empirically derived, that is from... Um, from actual data of hot objects. Uh, this is called the Stefan Boltzmann uh, law. He, these people had uh, this constant named after him. It has this value. Emissivity, it depends on the, the particular color of the, the object. It turns out, you know, uh, shiny objects uh, give off, uh, radiate energy more efficiently than uh, darker ones. Move on. Uh, and as we saw hints of in the simulation, if we found this maximum uh, peak wavelength of the curve of the spectrum here, this distribution, and you, if the product of that and the particular temperature is approximately a constant. And so here the constant would be uh, factor of 3, and half of 6 is 3, and a quarter of 12 is 3 there. Okay, so let's get to an example. This is a common question asked. By what factor does the power emitted by a body increase when you increase its uh, temperature from 100 to 200 degrees C? So if you want to try this, you can pause the video here. Otherwise, the, um, the answer is coming up. Okay, so how, the first thing we have to do is recognize mm, we can't really deal with the Celsius here. We have to convert this to, uh, to Kelvin. So we need to do that, and we have to be aware that uh, the power radiated is proportional to temperature to the fourth power. So we need to take this ratio of temperature to the fourth power. So if we do that, see this is uh, 200, 100 is about is 373 Kelvin, 200 therefore is 473. Take that ratio to the fourth power, and you get about a factor of two and a half, a little more. So at an object at 200 degrees C is uh, emitting about 2.6 times the energy uh, of an object at 100 degrees C. Okay, so let's talk about uh, surface heat cap capacity right now. So we, we, had, uh, we, we have talked about specific heat capacity. This is a little bit different. This is for an object that has, uh, uh, in terms of um, not kilograms, but uh, an area, square meters. So for example, the specific heat capacity would be have units of joules uh, per uh, kilogram, or some uh, unit of mass, uh, degree C or, or just Kelvin. This, um, this unit has, uh, since it's a surface, it has a unit of area in the denominator and is given by a very similar similar equation. So instead of mass, this is an area here. Here's your, your constant, which depends on the, the material and your change in temperature. And again, this is energy. Um, well, why are we doing this? Well, for example, 
why is this of interest to us? If we have um, the sun shining, as it has a certain amount of energy, how much of that is captured by the Earth? Uh, and it depends on the, the surface area. So let's take an example of um, an object. Uh, we have a 340 watts per square meter. We have a, That's the source of the energy. And it's uh, incident on um, some water, a lake. And it has a uh, surface heat capacitance of this value here. And we want to know how much time it would take to increase the temperature uh, by 2 degrees Kelvin, or 2 Kelvin. And comment on your answer is IB's way of saying, OK, um, why, is, why is this just an estimate? So again, if you want to work this out, pause the video. OK, so let's talk about this. Uh, so we have each square meter of the water would receive 340 watts, or joules per second. So the energy needed to raise that area of water by 2 degrees, or 2 Kelvin, would be given by our formula for the surface uh, uh, heat capacity. And if we plug in these numbers, we'll get this value here. Now the time would be the energy divided by power. We find that uh, we get this many seconds, about uh, 2.5 uh, million seconds, and that equates to about a month or so. So it would take about a month to raise that. But that's in the best case uh, if the comment on your answer is, well, we have to assume that the sun is only shining. You know, it's not directly ab above uh, overhead constantly for those 30 days. That's just that's not the way the world works. So um, if we assume that the sun shines 12 hours a day and it's overhead, well, that would be about twice as long or 60 days, two months. But it, you know, it's, it's going to be longer than that. So anyway, but that's um, what this question is looking for in terms of an answer. And this all really gets us to start discussing global warming, which is the next topic. Okay, this one is done. We'll see you.